Natasha Axelby joins me now from Place de la Bourse in Brussels, where a memorial is being held for the victims. Natasha, as more suspects are detained in relation to the attacks, vigils and tributes are underway, with those attending, from what I understand, saying that they're determined not to live in fear. Is that the sentiment where you are? It definitely is, Sally, and nothing can be more evident than this vigil here, where we're seeing over the last few hours and, of course, the last few days, thousands of people, both from uh, Brussels, outside of Brussels in Belgium, and also from around the world, coming here to, play, to pay their respects to the victims. And in their hands, many of them are holding flowers, but in their hearts, many of them are thinking about the victims, both the 31 people who were killed and also the more than 200, almost 300 people who were injured. Now, one of those people who was injured and has survived is a young man from Utah in the United States. His name is Mason Wells. And not only did he survive the terror attack at the Brussels airport on Tuesday, but he also survived the Boston Marathon uh, attack that happened three years ago. So this is his second terror attack and he's only 19 years of age and only three days after the attack is already having the resilience to speak to the media about this horrific event. I remember feeling a lot of, you know, a lot of really hot and really cold feelings on the whole right side of my body. I was, I was covered in a, a fair amount of blood and um, not necessarily mine even. And uh, I remember seeing, you know, fire in front of my face and also kind of fire down by, by my feet on the ground. And we, we were really close. I feel lucky to have uh, escaped with what I did. Gosh, what are the chances of that? That's absolutely remarkable. Now, in terms of logistics, in what way is it affecting the logistics in terms of people going to and from work and even flying out of Brussels? Well, it, it's having a profound effect, Sally. First of all, the airport is closed indefinitely. We're hearing that it certainly won't open before Monday. The metro station, which is the most common uh, bit of transport here, many parts of that are shut. And even if they weren't shut, people would still be dubious about going on the metro station, given what's happened. Uh, speaking to many of the locals around here, they were saying that what happened on Tuesday, it wasn't just an uh, attack on the airport or on Brussels. It was an attack on their way of life and the way they do things and since then security has been bolstered uh, massively. Soldiers on the streets are able to search any person's bag without a warrant as long as a police officer is present. So people here are saying that while they would usually think it was annoying to have such a big security presence and that interrupting their daily life, given what's happened they actually are welcoming it and feel much safer for it. All right, Natasha, thanks very much for that update there. Natasha Exelby in Brussels.